Does eating more protein really help with muscle mass and with strength? And is there a limit above which we need to get or maybe a limit at which there are no longer benefits? This is a, a question, these are questions that were trying to be answered by a meta-analysis published by uh, Dr. Stuart Phillips and his colleagues. So let's get into the detail. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and the study is Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Protein Intake to Support Muscle Mass and Function in Healthy Adults, and it was published in the Journal of Cachexia, Sarcopenia, and Muscle, with the senior author being Stuart Phillips, who we've done a podcast with at the Diet Director Podcast, which I really enjoy, and I recommend you go back and take a look at that. But this was an um, extensive meta-analysis, and they said their questions were they wanted to define the optimal daily protein intake to optimize skeletal muscle mass. So right away, we're not talking about the RDA, right? The RDA is sort of like the minimum. We're not talking about the minimum for health or for or survival. What they're trying to look at is the optimal level for lean muscle mass, for strength, um, because it's clear that the RDA is not optimal, but the optimal level is going to be much higher. Um, they also want to know, can protein without resistance training preserve lean muscle mass? Now, jump to the conclusion on that. They basically said there weren't enough studies to look at, enough randomized control studies looking at protein intake without exercise. Now, if you look at observational studies, you can usually see those who eat more protein have more lean muscle mass with or without resistance training, but those are observational studies, right? So those are a little bit weaker, not randomized control trials, intervention trials. Um, so for that part, they said they couldn't really tell. But the other part is they said they focused on only studies that included healthy adults. So not people who are obese, not people with chronic medical conditions, not people with, who are with frailty. Um, they wanted this to be healthy adults because the older, sicker, more frail group is going to differ a little bit, both in their ability to do any resistance training um, and how they incorporate the protein um, and use it. Now, I think it's pretty clear protein is really important for that group as well. So it's not that protein is not important for that group. They just wanted to focus on the healthy um, adults to see if there was a difference. So they looked at 74 randomized controlled trials and the amount of protein ranged from one gram per kilo per, per day up to 4.4 grams per kilo per day. But over half of them were over 1.6 grams per kilo. And then a third of them were between 1.2 and 1.6 grams per kilo per day. So that's where the overwhelming majority of them were, even though there were a few outliers. But here's the thing. When they had the, they all had comparison groups, right? So it was a higher protein versus a lower protein level. And this I found really interesting. 80% of the studies had the lower protein group at 1.2 grams per kilo. So already 50% higher than the RDA. So 1.2 grams per kilo per day, that was the control group. So that's important because if you were comparing it to like 0.8 or 0.6, you're going to see a benefit no matter what level of protein intake you take basically because that's so low. But with an already adequate or moderate level, level at 1.2 grams per kilo per day, it's a harder comparison. It's going to be harder to show benefit. So basically they found some small benefits. So there was a small benefit to protein levels um, on lean body mass, especially levels above 1.6 grams per kilo per day with resistance exercise, that that improved lean body mass. I don't think that's much of a surprise, but even getting above 1.6 grams per kilo per day with resistance exercise improved lean body mass. Now, that was most um, pr profound in, in younger patients. In older patients, anything above 1.2 grams per kilo per day gave a slight benefit, although it was much, it was small and, and more marginal than in the younger people. And it looked like they used 65 years old as their cutoff. But so younger people needed a higher amount, older people needed a little bit lower amount, but still more than the 1.2 grams per kilo per day. There was, you know, maybe a benefit in bench press strength, maybe a benefit in lower body strength. Um, but the strength data was was a lot weaker than just the lean body mass data and more marginal. So um, basically the main conclusion was additional protein and resistance exercise leads to small additional lean body mass gains and lower body strength. Um, it was more persistent in younger people um, with ingestions of greater than 1.6 grams per kilogram. So interesting, like why would strength not improve as much as lean body mass? Well, not all lean body mass is muscle, right? Some is bone, some is water. Um, that's all part of lean body mass. And it doesn't necessarily um, directly relate to improved strength, but improved strength is certainly very important. And also maybe, again, bigger numbers and what's the starting point, what's the strength starting point, the protein starting point. So maybe with a, a wider comparison, um, there would have been some difference there. For instance, if you're if you were including sort of the frail and the sick and 
the chronically ill who are really low on the strength scale, maybe they would see more benefit than someone who's young and healthy and already fairly high on the strength scale, right? If you're going from sort of inadequate strength to moderate strength versus moderate to high strength, to even higher strength, you could see how those would be different, different levels or different requirements. So this was a big undertaking to look at all these studies and crunch all this data. And I guess you could say the data was a little underwhelming, but, but here are the caveats. I mean, even adding more to 1.2 grams per kilo per day helped with lean body mass and helped a little bit with strength. So I think it's clear, definitely getting above the 0.8 grams per kilo per day is so important. And I've said that time and time again, and, and hopefully there's no longer a debate about that for optimal muscle, for optimal strength, we need more than just the RDA. So where is that level? Well, it looks like it's probably around 1.6 grams per kilo per day, or, or, or even a little more is the optimal level if you're focused on lean body mass and strength. Um, so I thought that was an interesting take home. And of course, we have so many guy, educational guides and information on protein intake, practical tips, how to do it, lots of great meal plans and recipes that are higher protein, how higher protein factors into satiety, and of course, how it uh, improves body composition. So take a look at dietdoctor.com for all those guides. Um, and if this was helpful, if you thought this was thought provoking, please click the thumbs up and subscribe button and you'll get all our updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, everybody.